Hello. I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course you know who this guy is. 2030 is the new 2100. Okay, this is a quote that I came up uh, with recently, and I kind of like it. Um, I think it could have traction, like the quote, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic, or things that I've also said in the past, like... Uh, weather weirding or weather whiplashing or weather wilding or the climate casino or we're playing in the game of risk right now um, in terms of um, consequences of abrupt climate change on different cities and things. But right now I want to talk about food and 2030 really is the new 2100. Climate change is already affecting global food production right now. Okay, it's not some far off future thing or in the next five years or 10 years. It's already affecting global food supplies right now, today. Today, there's about a 1% average reduction, annual reduction in the top 10 crops in the world. The top 10 crops supply about 83% of the calories that humans eat. There's a drop of about 3.5 times 10 to the 13th kilocalories per year reduction in these top uh, 10 crops. And just so that you know what these crops are in alphabetical order, they're uh, barley, cassava, maize, which is corn, oil palm, rapeseed, which is also most people know it as canola, rice, sorghum, soybeans, sugar canes, and wheat. So I'm going to talk all about a recent study on the subnational scale. So it looked at regions within countries, and it looked at the effects of global climate change on yields and crop production. And the most significant findings were that there's a reduction of about 13, being a reduction of about 13.4% in oil palm or palm oil. And there's been an increase of about 3.5% um, with uh, soybeans. The most negative effects are happening in Europe, South Africa, and Australia. There's some positive effects in Latin America and things are mixed in Asia, North America, and Central America. The growing season temperature over all harvested areas for these top 10 global crops that I've mentioned are an increase of 0 0.5 degrees Celsius to 1.2 degrees Celsius. And this is just over the period of the study, which happened in the early 1970s to um, to recent times. The precipitation changes are more variable than the temperature changes. So global average temperature over these areas increased, as I mentioned, but the precipitation changes, they went up in some places and down in other places. For example, over all of the sugarcane harvested regions, precipitation decreased 3.4 millimeters during the growing season and for all oil palm harvested regions precipitation increased 19 millimeters over the growing season. So averaging globally um, yields changed between minus 2,551 kilograms per hectare per year for palm oil to an increase of 982 kilograms per hectare per year for sugarcane. Globally, rice is decreasing at the moment, minus 0.3% on an annual basis. Wheat is decreasing minus 0.9% globally on an annual basis, and maize is roughly a push. Europe, like I said, is one of the most heavily hit regions. So yields for all dominant crops in Western plus South Southern Europe, down between 6.3% to 21.2% yields dropping because of climate change. Wheat, barley, maize, 
uh, rapeseed um, in Europe, European uh, Russia, basically, you know, big drops. But European Russia, the temperature is warming something like 0.4 uh, degrees Celsius per, per decade. That's been an increase since the 1970s in, in Russia. Ukraine's considered the breadbasket of Russia and yields are dropping there. In Eastern and Northern Europe, maize is down 24.5%, barley is down 9.1%, and wheat yields are down 2.1%. France overall down 24%, Germany overall down 11%, Spain down 4%, um, and Italy down 7%. So these numbers are, are pretty staggering. So um, I'm going to talk to you um, about, I'll, I'll show you the study. It's open source, and uh, I highly recommend that you look at it yourself. I mean... We're not getting the top 10 plagues. By the way, you know, I wondered what the top 10 plagues were, so I actually uh, had a look. And uh, so here they are. Waters to blood, frogs, gnats or lice, swarms of flies is number four, animals sick or dying, boils or skin infections, I guess that includes shingles, uh, is number six, hail is number seven, locust is number eight, darkness is number nine, maybe from a huge volcanic eruption. Uh, firstborn boys die is uh, the tenth plague. So those are the basically the, the ten plagues um, from, uh, and from, from history. So we're not getting all of them, but uh, you know we need to eat. Food is a very important issue, and like I said, 2030 is the new 2100. Okay, so let's have a look at the details now. Okay, so this is my um, this is my website, paulbeckwith.net. Um, please consider um, supporting my work um, with a donation to my PayPal account. Here, I was talking about the game of risk and how different countries are are. Um, being adversely affected seriously by uh, abrupt climate change. Okay, so on my Twitter page, um, this is an article by Deepak Ray on how climate change is already affecting crop yields and food security. And that's the focus of, of this video. Um, let's have a look at the paper. Okay, farmers, of course, have to deal with weather, but climate change is making it harder by altering temperature and rainfall patterns. Just think of the unusually cool and wet spring in the central U.S. and the difficulty in planting. Um, also, over the last um, year, we've had record wet um, conditions in, in the U.S. So, University of Minnesota, Institute of the Environment, they spent four years collecting information on crop productivity from around the world. They focused on the top 10 global crops that provide the bulk of consumable food calories. Roughly 83% of consumable food calories come from these top 10 sources. Other than cassava and palm oil, they're all important U.S. crops. Okay, different places affected different ways, and I'm going to go into the details of the actual paper. But basically, global hunger is rising after declining for a decade. So here we go down here, and it, you know it was it reached a minimum of 783.7 million people um, in 2014, and then it rose slightly in 2015, and it's been rising 2016 and 2017. Okay, so this is the uh, paper. Climate change is has likely already affected global food production. Okay, so crop yields are projected to decrease under future climate conditions. Recent research suggests that yields have already been impacted. Okay, so they looked at the top 10 global crops, barley, cassava, maize, oil palm, rapeseed, rice, sorghum, soybean, sugarcane, and wheat at 20,000 political units. So basically different counties and regions uh, within countries, so, in, so a... a um, subnational scale, and they found huge 
some, some surprising change in yields already, ranging from minus 13.4% oil palm to three, plus 3.5% 3 soybean. Impacts are mostly negative in Europe, Southern Africa and Australia, positive in Latin America, but mixed in Northern and Central America. This has likely led to about 1% average reduction or minus 3.5 times 10 to the 13th kilocalories per year in consumable food calories in these 10 crops. In nearly half of food insecure countries, the calories available to, for people has decreased. Climate change has already affected global food production. Okay, now I'm going to go into, now there's a table in this uh, paper. They, they, they talk about the different regions and so on. There's a table which I'll talk a little bit about here. Um, so this is a percentage of harvested areas where the model is significant. So large percentages of each of these regions has significant data. The yield change in kilograms per hectare per year. Okay, um, so barley already down significantly. Oil palm down 25.51 kilograms per hectare per year average. And the increase was in sugarcane, um, sh more sugarcane being grown. Then this is production change in million tons, megatons per year. So big drops in barley, big drops in oil palm, the biggest increase was in sugarcane. Um, percentage yields of production change. Okay, so yields dropping minus 7.9% for barley, oil palm minus 13.4%. Increase for things like the biggest increase was for soybeans. Okay, and this is um, kilocalories, a percentage of kilocalories that are consumed by the crop in the different regions and how those are, are dropping, okay? And the key findings are these maps here. And I'll show you these maps for the different crops. But first of all, I just want to make sure you're aware of what all these crops are. So maize, this is maize. I'm in Google Images, just Googling maize. And here we go, we all recognize corn. You know, most people know it just as corn and not maize, it's the same thing. Then we have rice, okay? Rice plants, and uh, you know, we think of them as being grown in, in um, waterlogged fields, right? Um, you know, right, this is rice. Then we have wheat, okay? We all, we've all seen wheat fields in North America, you know, driving across the plains. Then we have the soybeans, okay? This is what the soybeans uh, are like, soybean production. Again, um, you know, soybeans, everybody knows about soy sauce and there's lots of other things, you know, that the beans are used and eaten directly and Trump has a hate on these things with his tariffs. This is the oil palm, palm oil. Um, and what do we use palm oil for? Uh, this is a good graphic. It's used in beverages like su high sucrose you know, foods, cookies and candies, personal care products, cleaning products, cosmetics, you know, um, burning down rainforests and putting palm oil plantations is a huge problem in many uh, equatorial countries. This is sugar cane growing in the fields, it grows very fast, grows very high, you know, sort of reminds me a bit of bamboo, okay, for making um, sugars. This is the barleys. Okay, um, barley's looks like the porridge and things. Um, you know, uses of if you, uses of barley. If you're not sure what it's in, um, very many, many d different health benefits and uses. You know, here's some bread here. This is rapeseed oil or canola, more commonly known as canola. And canola oil is in many different foods and industrial products. Cassava, we're not so familiar in North America with cassava. It's like a root, high starchy root. Um, uses of cassava, many, many different things. Sorghum um, is the other one. Sorghum grains, it's hardier than a lot of wheats and so on. Used for human feed, animal feed, and so on. Now, these are the key findings. Um, you can see, you know, there's barley and rice, and it shows you the regions that are declining most 
there's maps of all of these things around the, of, around the world and of how the different crops are decreasing. Thanks for listening.